Hi, I'm Jeffrey, and right now we're going to look at the shortest and the longest books of the Bible. It's going to be really fun. Now, you might know that while the Bible is bought in just one volume, it wasn't always just one book. In fact, the word Bible means books. That's because the Bible is a collection of smaller documents that came together over time uh, to form the Bible that we have today. Those smaller documents are called books. So the Bible is one book made up of many smaller books. We're going to look at which of those books are the longest and which of those are the shortest. Now, a quick word before we jump in here. Uh, we're not looking at the number of words in the English Bible because there are so many English Bibles. Case in point, if you look at a letter that is written by Paul to a man named Timothy, this is actually the book of 2 Timothy, there's a verse which the NIV uh, writes as, uh, all scripture is God-breathed. All scripture is God-breathed. That's five words. In Greek, there are only three words that that's being translated from. Uh, and so you go from three to five, but that's not the only English translation of this verse. In fact, the New American Standard Bible has six words. Instead of all scripture is God breathed, it's all scripture is inspired by God. And then the KJV has even more. All scripture is given by inspiration of God, eight words. So you can see why we would have a lot of variants if we were to only count the English words. So instead, we're just going to bypass the English word counts for now and just focus on the Greek and Hebrew word counts of these books of the Bible. So let's jump in. The longest book of the Bible is the book of Jeremiah. Jeremiah was one of the prophets and uh, you, you'll find him a little bit over halfway through the Bible if you were to, if you were to just let that Bible fall open. Jeremiah is a super long book because Jeremiah had a lot to say. The, uh, the kingdom of Judah was about to fall into captivity to Babylon, and Jeremiah was warning the people about uh, what was to come. So it's a very long book. Uh, the next longest book is the book of Genesis. This is a book that most of us are very familiar with, at least on a Bible story level, because this is where you find the tales of Adam and Eve, Cain and Abel, Noah and the Ark, everything, almost everything that the Bible has to say about Abraham, we find in Genesis. Joseph and the Coat of Many Colors, that's in Genesis. Genesis is a really big book, and it has to be to hold all of these iconic stories. So Genesis is the second longest book of the Bible. In Hebrew, it's about 32,000 words. Jeremiah is around 33. Next up, we have Psalms. Now, if you were to ask me as a child in Sunday school what the longest book of the Bible was, I would have said Psalms. And I would have said that because the book of Psalms has 150 Psalms in it. And so you think, well, that's more little divisions or, you know, that's, that's more than any other chapter count uh, from the other books of the Bible. So naturally, a lot of people think, oh, Psalms has 150 segments, so it must be the longest. It's not, because a lot of those segments are super short. Not all of the Psalms are very long. Psalms is only about 30.1 thousand Hebrew words long, which means it's still the third longest, but it's not number one, not as long as Jeremiah. Very close to Psalms is Ezekiel. Ezekiel is another prophet. Uh, he was a contemporary of Jeremiah's, whereas Jeremiah was in Jerusalem warning about the coming destruction uh, from the Babylonians, Ezekiel was taken captive with uh, some other people from Judah to Babylon. And so Ezekiel was seeing visions of the cleansing of Jerusalem, and he saw these visions of, uh, of a new restored kingdom of God. So really interesting book. He had some really, really fascinating uh, visions that, uh, that you'll want to check out. They, they make for some fun uh, some fun visual pictures. Exodus, uh, significantly shorter than the other four at uh, 25.9 thousand Hebrew words. Exodus has a very, very famous Bible story in it. This is the story of Moses leading the Israelites out of slavery in Egypt. 
We have blockbuster movies about it, the Ten Commandments, the Prince of Egypt. Uh, This is where we meet Moses, and this is when God makes a very special agreement with the nation of Israel and says, I'm going to be your God, you're going to be my people, and this is what I expect of you. Exodus, a very long book, and that rounds out the top five of the longest books of the Bible. Let's look at the shortest books of the Bible. The shortest books of the Bible, with the exception of Obadiah, are in the New Testament. And that's because these books are letters. They're very brief notes compared to the large groups of visions and oracles from Jeremiah and Ezekiel, or this massive, massive hymnal of the Psalms. No, these are just quick, brief letters. 3 John is a little bit over 200 words. 2 John is only slightly longer. Uh, This makes sense because uh, 3rd and 2 John are really tiny. You You can find a lot of Bibles that can fit both of them on about one page or, or, or maybe two. They're super short. Uh, fun fact, while 3rd John has fewer Greek words than 2nd John, 2nd John has fewer verses. So that's another reason why it's kind of important for us to look at word count if we're trying to gauge the length of a book. Next up, we have uh, Philemon, which is a book written by Paul to a man named Philemon, or Philemon. Um, and that's a, that's a really interesting book in which Paul is uh, writing to this church leader and saying, I'm, I want you to free a runaway slave, is, is essentially what he's saying. Uh, so very interesting book, very powerful book. You should check it out. Obadiah is an Old Testament prophet. Another very short book, obviously, only about 400 words in Hebrew. And Obadiah is uh, calling out a neighboring nation to the nation of Judah. He's saying, you really shouldn't have uh, sided with Judah's enemies when when they came against Judah. That's not a good call, and you're going to regret it. Then we have the book of Jude. Uh, which is 461 words long, so just slightly longer than Obadiah. Jude is another New Testament letter in which he's urging Christians to contend for the gospel. He's warning people that false teachers have snuck into the church and they're warping Jesus' teachings. And so he's telling people to watch out for that. Very short, quick, to-the-point book. Really interesting thing is that if you look at the average length, of all the books of the Bible, it comes very, very close to the length of the book of Daniel, which is also a very well-known book of the Bible. This is where you have the story of Daniel in the lion's den. You have uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the fiery furnace. The book of Daniel is about 9.2 thousand uh, words long in Hebrew and Aramaic. That's another language that Uh, that comes into play with the book of Daniel and a handful of other books. Uh, And so Daniel is around the average length of a book of the Bible. Pretty interesting. One more thing that we need to look at now that we know the longest and the shortest books of the Bible that we have today is that some books of the Bible may have been cheated out of the title of longest and shortest. And those books are Kings, Chronicles, and Samuel. And here's why. If you look in an English Bible today, you're going to find the books of 1st and 2nd Samuel, 1st and 2nd Kings, 1st and 2nd Chronicles. And that's because at the time that they were written, these books were too long to fit on one scroll. The scrolls, they, they just couldn't support all the material of these books, and so the books got split into two. They're technically one work, but... They just got split up. And then those splits persisted over time. We just preserved them as 1st and 2nd Samuel, 1st and 2nd Kings, 1st and 2nd Chronicles. But if we were to put them back together the way they were written, then these would be the longest books of the Bible. Uh, Kings is a little bit over 39,000 Hebrew words long, and Chronicles and Samuel are neck and neck at about 38,000. So you might say that these were cheated from the title, 
of longest books of the Bible because of the technology of the time. That's just how the cookie crumbles, I guess. So now you know the longest books of the Bible, you know the shortest books of the Bible. It's pretty interesting when you look at how the Bible comes together. It's a very beautiful collection of very important writings. I hope this is helpful. I hope it makes you more interested in the Bible. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Jeffrey with Overview Bible. Hey, if you want to see more videos like this, go ahead and hit subscribe. I'd love to have you along for this journey. Poor little kings. They did you dirty, buddy. They did you dirty.